All right, let's see if we can get through this without me coughing too much. I've got a bunch of uh, cough drops lined up unwrapped. Um, today we're going to be carving your tile and start creating your designs. On the f on this half, it'll be Scraffito. On the other half, we're gonna carve a relief, and then uh, you're going to put the color down in the channels that you carve. And we'll either wipe away, um, carve away or sand away the stuff that's, or the color that's on the highest levels so that the color stays down in the channels. And I uh, did a really quick design that I kind of copied off one of the students who was doing theirs. They had a little bit different pattern on their snake, but I like the snake idea. Uh, it's organic and it's got some geometry to the diamonds. So, And the reason we had you draw your design on this paper it's because it'll be easily to transfer if I put a little bit of pressure on the paper when I'm drawing. Hopefully it'll create an indentation that I can use as my guide. It may actually lift a little bit of the color off on the side that we've painted with the underglaze. We'll just have to see. Wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. All right, get the diamonds on here real quick. I don't like the eyes, but I'm gonna put them on there anyway. They don't look very menacing with a round design. To keep the uh, diamonds sort of lined up, I did a line down the center of his spine, or her spine. Notice the camera shaking quite a bit. Sorry about that. I'll try not to put so much pressure on the table with my elbows. I can't remember if I did the rattles or not. All right, let's see. I don't know if you can tell by in, in this light, but there is an indentation and I can see it really easily. So that's the important part. All right, some of the tools that we'll use are this needle tool is used if you want to actually scratch a line into the clay. I'm gonna do that real quick here. Mine, my clay is not quite leather hard yet. You'll notice that the line is kind of fuzzy, so it's not ideal, but it'll get the job done. So that's the needle tool. You can scratch a thin line with that. And then the other tools are all ribbon cutters. So they have a sharp edge usually, and then a duller edge, and they have just these curves and different shapes that are used to carve into clay and to scrape clay. It doesn't really matter which ones you use. You can experiment a little bit. We have enough tools for each of you to select two different shapes to take back to your table, and then you can share between yourselves at the table. If it's all encrusted with clay, you might wanna take a little chance to clean it up or take some time to clean it up. But those are what the tools look like. So in this scenario, I am going to carve away the inside of the diamonds. And like I said, it's not an ideal situation because the clay is not quite leather hard. I'm gonna get a little bit smaller tool that still has a flat edge. I'm getting the narrower areas. There's one. So, 
So, you're just removing all of the underglaze to expose your clay underneath. The clay that we're using is gonna be kind of a reddish brown or orange color. It's called terracotta. So when you're choosing your underglaze for your bowl, you'll wanna think about which one's gonna look best. Diamonds come and meet. All right, if you wait until the clay is leather hard, you'll have a lot higher success rate. I'm gonna try to have some hair dryers out if your clay is not quite to the stage you want it. You can speed up that process. Usually forcing clay to dry is not a great idea because it can crack it. The slower cl clay can dry, the better. All right, I think you get the idea on that. And then you have to decide how you're gonna show that edge. If you wanted to, you could just draw, or you could just use one of these skinnier ones and, and do a channel. Uh, or could do a halo around it with a wider band. I think I'm gonna do the skinnier idea. Let's see if that works good. So I'm gonna use this thin tool to create a line. It shows the outside edge. Of that snake. And I want there to be a differentiation between the outside area and the inside area. And what I mean by that is the ground versus the snake. And I, I'd love to do this like a scaly pattern on the snake, but I'm worried that it's gonna get a little bit messy. So instead, I'm gonna pretend there's gravel on the outside of this snake. And I'm not gonna finish up just cause I don't want you guys to have to sit through this whole thing, but, um, so I'm gonna create a pattern on the outside that, that kind of has that feeling of gravel. So, I'm gonna just take little notches out of this outside area. Continuing, continuing that idea of pattern. And your line, your design is supposed to be linear based, but there's some loopholes in that. So a dot or a little hash mark like I'm making here is just a really short line. Or these just happen to be very broad lines that are as wide as they are long. That's still a line. But I would continue this pattern on the outside just to create a visual separation between what is my snake and what's the ground. I guess you could think this is really short grass or whatever. Oh, that was not smart. You'll notice that you can get like a ground of the color into the white. So I'm gonna have to do a little touch up. There's a little bit of smudging here where the, the, the uh, clay was still wet and in the bag it got transferred onto the white surface. So that's not ideal, but you don't wanna brush like I did. I just kind of tap it off lightly brush it maybe with an actual brush. All right, so hopefully you understand that Scraffito is you're scratching into the clay to reveal the clay underneath and get rid of the underglaze on top. That's how you create the design. 
but you kind of have to think of a positive and negative uh, as far as what's going to be white and what's going to be red or that orange color and so forth. On this other side, we're going to dig the channel first and then we're going to put color inside of it. So I chose blue. as my underglaze color. I'm using this skinny ribbon cutter to create my channels. And I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and fast forward or, or do a time lapse so that you can see it happening but don't have to wait so long. All right, this is the final product. I have done all the carving and applied some underglaze. Ideally, you would do three coats, but I've run out of time. School's about to start. So instead, I'm going to uh, just do one, and then I blow dried it, and I'm gonna use this bigger ribbon cutter to scrape the highlights. We can also sand it but we haven't bought any sandpaper yet, so I'm gonna just do this to sh reveal what it should look like, or, or at least a simulation of what it should look like. Depending on how deeply you carved, you gotta be kind of cognizant of that so that you don't obliterate all your pattern. A little over on the other side, but hopefully we can get all that pieces that I've scraped off on the... All right, so here's our final reveal here the color is on the top part and it's been scraped away and then on here we've you've carved the lines in you've applied paint so it goes down in the channels and then it uh, gets scraped away on the highlights so it's kind of a reverse idea but either way will work you get to uh, practice both on your tiles to see which one you prefer and then you get to apply what you've learned to your bowl. Thank you very much.